I'm Eshkelar, the world's greatest Canadian wizard, and this is another in an ongoing series called Your Fighting Arts is Wrong. Being a wizard, of course, I know everything about punching people, right? I've been hit enough. Anytime monsters get through the get through the tank, guess where they're going? To the mouthy guy, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, today I want to talk about a fighting art. I think. It's hard to tell. And I'm going to explain why I'm saying that. It's called Aikido. And Aikido has a meaning that nobody gets, not even the greatest master of Aikido. The only person that understands the secret of Aikido is your old pal Ashkelar. Aren't you glad you know me now? Yeah. So I'm going to try a knock-knock joke on you. Eshkelar is great. Eshkelar is great who? Eshkelar. <laughs> that's it. That's, oh, ah, that's the bee material, but it makes me feel better. I get all warm and fuzzy inside like there's a tarantula in my pants. So, I want to talk about our favorite fighting art that isn't really a fight. Well, I, it's really hard to say. That's why I'm going to describe it from an outsider's perspective. Aikido. Aikido is... These two lovely looking men. Really, if you like beautiful men, go to an Aiki do Dojo and sit there and watch them work out. They're all beautiful. They're fashionable too. They wear a two part gi that's white on top and black on the bottom. It's all so formal looking. You kind of expect them to hand each other a corsage and start dancing. So, and they might when you're not there. I don't know, it's not my business. My business is analyzing the fighting arts. And this is why your Aikido is wrong. If you watch the men, watch the students and the master work out, watch them practice, watch him teach, you will very quickly, if you are a dancer or a fighting artist yourself, you will see right away, in a very short time I did, because I did it down here at Aetna. They got an Aikido studio. Nice, huh? Go watch yourself. You don't have to take my word for things. Go down and like, Pick yourself up some culture. <laughs> there is a thing called culture. Yeah, you don't know. If you want to see what culture is like in its essence, go to the Starlight and order the Polish platter. There's some culture for you. Yeah, it's part of culture. Is it's unique and unusual cuisine. Another part is its social appurtenances. In this case, Aikido is a social appurtenance. It comes to us out of Japan. And it's very pretty to watch the guys work out, but you'll realize right away, if you're a person that works with this stuff, that they are not transmitting any force. That Aikido master is not really knocking that man to the ground. He's not swinging that man to the ground. Centrifugal force is not forcing that man to the ground. That man is cooperating with the master to present a beautiful ballet every time. Watch. I've seen it before where a master is in the center of the mats where the novices run at them one by one by one by one. They get back up again and run in again. They get back up. It's, it's a constant stream of, you know, loose affiliation of millionaires and billionaires. Constant stream of staccato information. And it's coming at you and the master's like, oh, down to the floor. Oh, down to the floor. Oh, down to the floor. Oh, way, oh, way. I just push you. I just do this and the guy falls down. If you haven't seen this, Google Aikido and YouTube. A-I-K-I-D-O. Aiki way do. <laughs> yeah. Do a way a behavior. Ray, some other kind of thing. I don't know. But anyway. When you watch these guys work, you'll realize that they're not really transmitting energy. This isn't judo. They're not using an opponent's enemy against him. That's what they want you to think, sort of. That's sort of what they give the idea of. But really, that energy isn't going anywhere except where the person that's running in intends for it to go. Otherwise, is the impression the novice gets, he might hurt the master. Yeah, that's what it seems like. For us guys that are outside of your wonderful, deep, and, and culturally beautiful art, to us it just looks like a bunch of Grown men dressed in fancy clothes doing a dance. Karate does not. We see the meaning of karate. Various forms of kung fu as a fighting art, we see them for what they are. 
But when we watch Aikido, we don't see a fighting heart. We see an elaborate, beautiful, swirly dance where nobody gets hurt. Nobody even hyperextends anything. That's cool. That's completion. That's Mugen. It will go on forever, my friends. It's a tesseract. So, what is Aikido then? Because the students are saying it is a legitimate combat art, Eshkalar, out of our way. We'll show you how cultured we are by beating the crap out of you with our fists. I never saw a fist taught in Aikido, but suddenly, when they're mad, they're throwing fists. Interesting. Interesting. You guys are philosophers, modifying your worldview on the way. I wonder what your master would say about that. But here's why you're doing what you're doing. Here's why he's doing what he's doing. Here's why his master did what he did all the way back to Tokugawa, Japan. And here's why it's wrong. It's not meant to be wrestling between unarmed men. It's not meant to be a graceful passage like do -si do Now bow to your partner. Bow to your do -si do It isn't that. There's a meaning for every motion they teach in Aikido. It has very specific meaning. In the fighting arts, it is more derived from fighting than any of the other so-called fighting arts or so-called martial arts. It is more derived from honest fighting situations than any of the others. Yeah. Here's what happened. When Tokugawa Japan took over, remember I said in another series, another episode, uh, your Musashi is wrong, right? When Tokugawa Japan, the shogun had clamped in uh, over the end of the Sengoku Jidai, the age of the country of war, so about 1604 or so. Well, there wasn't any place to do anything anymore. And people walked around without their swords. Well, people walked around without their weapons of war, but the samurai were still allowed to permit it still permitted to carry swords, two swords, a long one and a short one, called the Daisho. That's your noble's accoutrement. That's kind of like your Republican Party badge, you know, lets you in anywhere. Everybody loves you automatically. Everybody knows you're not a liar. You're a straight shooter. Of course. So the Democrats are telling themselves, too, how are you ain't different? Ah, I never hear any hard, fast rules. I only hear, I believe, and that's all. All credulous people believe. If you're a credulous person, well, that's nice of you. You're one of us. But that doesn't make you right. So, let's look at it from the point of view of where is this fighting art, this form of fighting art, useful? Well, now you got Tokugawa Japan, and the only time you're really allowed to do anything with a sword or a weapon is when you go to a dojo. And you hang out in the dojo with the boys and you get all sweaty and take a bath together. It's very masculine. It's very masculine. It really is. It's like, you know, testosterone fest in there. Sausage fest. Everybody's having a lot of fun. Everybody wants to date the master's daughter because he owns the dojo and you'll have a place to live if you marry her. That's important stuff. So, if the master has a son, it can get awkward. But you never know. Japan was very open-minded. So anyway, you went places as a samurai still in the Tokugawa Shogunate. You'd swagger around. You didn't have much money because they'd cut your stipend down quite a bit. But you'd get a little money and you'd go whoring and drinking and watching the plays and the poetry and the shows and having a lot of fun and probably getting too drunk as much as you could early in the month, and later in the month you'd be crying and jonesing, but you know, you, you had the binge and purge thing going, all this great partiers do, all the rock stars did, and you were a rock star, in your own way, in your own mind, just like I am in mind, ah, ah, except I'm a real one, oh, oops, where's my accreditation, remember I just asked, <laughs> so anyway, but Aikido existed in that world. Because in that world, you were, if you were meeting somebody important, not carrying your swords. You would leave them at the door. You'd leave them with the sword check girl. You weren't carrying your swords. And you'd be in a castle meeting with a lord, or you'd be in a castle waiting to meet with the shogun, or waiting to meet with whoever, right? And uh, if you're in a castle around the seat of power, you are surrounded by enemies. The best example of that, I think, is Hillary Clinton here in the United States. I'm here temporarily, of course. 
But Hillary Clinton, I think you would know this. You're surrounded by enemies. Everyone who smiles at you smiles falsely. Everybody who says they love you does not. Everyone that wants your confidence is not worth it. Does that sound like anything you know? I bet it does. That's the problem with being driven by desire. That's why desire is bad. Buddhism is not good because Buddhism wants you to let go of your humanity for some uncertain result called, yeah, in the future you'll be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suffer peasants and then go to heaven. <laughs> We're the guys who own the businesses make you suffer. We're going to promote that doctrine forever. <laughs> it works. So, I'm not saying these things really happen. I'm just a raving lunatic who likes to entertain people. And if this is entertaining to you, you might be a thinker. You might even be a Canadian. And that's the highest honor I can pay. You may now eat the sandwich. So, you're in a castle and you're surrounded by enemies. And this has happened. Some of the classic stories of the samurai era are about men who got trapped in the castle where they didn't have their swords, but their enemies were ready for them. There was the one guy who got his head smashed in doors. You know, they got the sliding, you know, the, uh, what do they call it, shogi, right? Or shoji? Shoji. They got the sliding doors, and in a, in a castle, they're pretty substantial. You know, they got big, heavy wood buttresses, and blammo, you could slam like that. Well, the one guy, he was bowing, and the, his enemies were both sides of the shoji, and they went wham, and they crushed his head and killed him. So, that stuff could happen. Now, if you get jumped by a bunch of enemies, because it could happen, if you were visiting somebody who was friendly with somebody else and made a secret deal with them, your life wasn't worth a plug nickel. And people might just suddenly rise up against you in the middle of a crowded room. Suddenly their sword's out. Well, were you, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't know she was your, oh my gosh. Wait, wait. She's your daughter and your wife. I'm my own grandpa. I can see why you're mad. I'd be mad too if somebody found that out about me. No way, I'm not. So anyway. You needed, in a situation like that, where you're in a tea house or you're in a castle, or you're in any other place where you might have to leave your swords at the door, because samurai was some fighting, stabbing, threatening, bullying mother. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, at any rate, and your enemies could like suddenly jump out around you. The yakuza might have set you up because you had money. Anything could have happened. And now you're surrounded by enemies and you don't have your sword, and they might have theirs. You know, you're upstairs like enjoying a tea ceremony while you're watching good-looking courtesans take their clothes off and suddenly you're downstairs, shooting some gooey, and you're like, oh, no, I'm screwed. Well, here's what you do. You wait for the enemy to rush you. Of course, they're gonna, right? Even though it's Japan, they're still Russian. There's got to be a joke here somewhere. Oh, well, anyway. As long as they keep quit stalling. <laughs> it's, it's, this is going to go on. So anyway, and a master swordsman, because nobody else matters in Aikido. All you students, all you supposed masters, don't matter in Aikido. All that matters is that first samurai that realized that he was without a sword in a room full of enemies. And the first thing he's wanting to do is to get hold of the sword for himself. With that in his hand, he feels better. It's like a cod piece. Having a cod piece in a room full of people like to kick people in the balls. That's... <laughs> You're the, you're the king. You're the one-eyed man in the land of the blind. Tell you what, whack, how I didn't get me. So, you know. So what happens is, if you're a sword master, as I'm trying to explain to you, Aikido is not for, an, is not for anyone but a sword master. So to study Aikido, you must first learn the sword. If you don't know the sword, you don't understand the lineage of Aikido. You don't understand the patterns of Aikido. You don't understand the force transmission intended in the moves of Aikido. And your master is a fool. It's all right. He's allowed to be. There are a lot of masters that are fools all through history. Many gurus and many teachers of various kinds, sensei, shifu, you can call what you want, right? Con men. They've been jerks and idiots and didn't know any better. They're just passing something along that they picked up imperfectly because that's how people are. We all had photographic memories. We'd be pretty embarrassed most of the time, feeling guilty, wouldn't we? I think so. So anyway, in Aikido, the sword master 
masters this situation without a sword. This is cool as hell. This is the baddest damn stuff there is in all the fighting arts. A swordsman without a sword arms himself, and now he's dangerous. So, how would he do that? Well, if the other guy's got swords and you don't, ask anybody that's done any knife fighting how easy it is to get hurt in a knife fight. Real easy. As a matter of fact, knife fight's the most unlikely kind of fight in the world. You can't predict anything. You can't, your mind and eye can't react fast enough to respond at this distance when somebody's sticking knives at you. You can't. That's why people study patterns and train themselves to do patterns. So that when they're in a situation in their body, they hope will just take over and do that pattern. And suddenly they're helping themselves. And that is the basis of what I was talking about before is trying to express what Zen is. You can't do Zen unless your body and mind have been trained to it. Otherwise, you just do some idiotic thing like everybody does. It takes a whole lifetime of cultivation. And you have to grow up in the system so the system is naturally part of you so you do not question it on the way in. You've already accepted it before critical thinking is applied and that's how Zen works. And if you don't have it, you're just like an Aikido master master who doesn't know the sword. So, I have a friend. He's a very talented, talented fighting artist and a fighting arts trainer. And he's probably so far above me as far as technique and understanding of his specific craft goes that there's no way I can equal him. And I'm glad. Because why not? He's cool. I like knowing cool people. And he studied regular karate, too. Yeah, became quite good at it. I remember how fast he was. Oh my gosh, is he fast and precise. So he has a little bit of everything you need there, right? Before he became a sword master, before he trained all those years on the sword, he first mastered his body. So he's one of those heroic types. He can fight without a sword if he needs to, but what he really wants to do is get a hold of that sword. And I mean in a situation where you must defend yourself to the death. I'm not talking like at a bar where people are, yeah, I don't like the Green Bay Packers. Oh, I do. Yeah, let's draw swords and kill each other. It's not what I mean. Though it used to happen. Now it happens with pistols and cocaine. Ah, that should be a game, right? Like cowboys and Indians, pistols and cocaine. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Give me that much coke, I'll call anybody my little friend. I'm telling you. So anyway, Aikido is meant to be used by the master who is suddenly without his weapon or knows he will be without his weapon and is now assailed by enemies. So take my friend who is a sword master. He is capable of defending himself against armed opponents, well, against opponents with his fists probably better at it than I am. I train with my fist more than anything else. And with the sword, I I train the sword not to fight. I train the sword to exercise, to keep myself fit. And I did extremely well with it for many years. Best damn exercise tool in the world. Easiest one to put away when you're done with it. Yeah, try that with, with a lifting table. And free weights. <laughs> so. But he would... First and foremost, if there was a fight and he was in the middle of it and some guys were armed, he would seek to arm himself because though he can defend himself with his fists, that is not his primary skill set. His primary skill set is tuned to his mastery of the sword. And so he'd want a sword. Now I have that. I have so many more capabilities, so many more options. I can handle myself so much better. This is my expertise, my area, the area that I have achieved, that I've cultivated perfection, whether I've achieved it or not. And that's what Aikido is for. When my friend, the sword master, goes into a room full of people that have swords, or that he didn't think they had swords, they weren't supposed to have swords. And then suddenly some come out. The first thing he's going to want to do is arm himself. And to do that, you have to be a master swordsman because you have to know how a swordsman is going to act. And you have to know that and work that. So when that swordsman goes for you, 
he doesn't get you. As a matter of fact, if you know it well enough, that's why you have to be a sword master. He's standing like this. He's going this way. He's going to do that. I'm going to look like I'm going to do just what he expects me to do and go the other way. Now I've got his sword arm. I'm a, I've got the elbow here. I've got the hand, wrist there. I'm going to just drive him down the floor. Kick him in the head a few times. And doggone, i got that sword now. Or, if I know how to do it on the way down, I just take the sword off him. Because you can bend the wrist in a way it's not supposed to go and the person must let go. That's how I discovered my wrists were damaged because I'm trying to pull a squeegee when I got to the I Bam! My hand would jump open like somebody pushed a button. So that's a real thing. And at that time, he can take the sword off his opponent, one opponent, and now he's armed. Understand, that's a big difference for a sword master, isn't it? And that's what Aikido is for. It's for a sword master. For a sword master who is unarmed to arm himself in the very narrow sociological environment of Tokugawa, Japan, where you might not have a sword but somebody else might have a sword because of the tensions and the situations. That's Eshkelar. Yeah, your Aikido is wrong. It isn't about grown men dancing around in pretty clothes, though they can if they want. I mean, we can dance if we want. It's about misdirection. It's about taking your opponents and making them think you're going to do something when you're not, when you're just there to grab their sword. And now you got a sword. And it has no meaning at all in mocks nicks, as they say in Germany, unless you are a sword master. And if you're not a sword master, master the sword, then go back to Aikido, and then see what I was talking about. The guy that teaches you won't even know this, but you'll see it immediately. This is Vineshkalar. Your fighting arts is wrong. But I'm here to set you straight, or at least be another voice in the wilderness. And if I'm wrong, who knows? Maybe it'll be you schooling me. I won't mind.